<laughs> okay, I'm going to do a video here real quick, live stream. Um, uh, I've I've been in ministry for a long time, and uh, <laughs> I've seen this thing over and over and over again. And um, you let movements go, and there's there starts to be division, and things get started. And there's been times I've let it go, and it just goes and you know takes off. And uh, there's other times I have to do something about it, you know. So this is one of those times that I need to say something. And um, before this thing gets spread any further, there, you know, the the people that go, they they try to pull others away from them. You know, we're going to talk about Second Corinthians chapter 12 here, but uh, let me just show you here in Acts chapter 20. I'm talking about. I'm not even waiting for people to come in here, but um, you can come in as you're coming along and stuff. And, but uh, this will be for people to watch later. But um, Acts chapter 20. Uh, where's the verses at here? Verse 29. For I know this that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Um, there's dissension right now. Um, within the Bible believing movement, specifically people who follow or, or are friends of this ministry. And it's getting worse and worse and worse. And it's just, it's over something that's just so, I just, I can't believe I'm having this discussion, you know, kind of a thing. Um, and so, but we're going to, we're going to read second Corinthians chapter 12 here. I have it up on screen. <clears throat> I usually, you know, obviously if you have a Bible there in front of you, a King James Bible in front of you, then you should follow along on that, or you can look at the screen here, whatever. Um, we read this last night. It was just such an amazing thing how, um, you know, a lot of times I'm going through something in my life and we just, we go through, we read a chapter a night, we read a chapter of the Bible and then we sing a hymn and literally the chapter lined up with what I'm going through and um, you hear my phone going there the chapter lined up and the hymn that we sang lined up with ex exactly what we're going through right now so we're going to read here second Corinthians chapter 12 verse 11 um, I get I get pushed into this stuff and you know of people calling me a cultist and all kinds of stuff and I, and I have to say I am becoming full in glorying. Ye have compelled me, for I ought to have been commended of you, for nothing am I behind the very chiefest apostles, though I be nothing. Um, second here, I, I got to mute this for a minute. My phone's going here. It's going through the thing. Everybody can turn there in your Bible. We'll get back to the Bible thing here in just a minute. Um, give me a minute. I'll be right back. Okay, sorry about that. Um, but uh, getting back to what I was saying, um, hey, Second Corinthians chapter twelve, verse eleven. You know, when a man gets into ministry, it's it's you you have to make it all about Jesus Christ, and and I've always done that. I've tried to put Jesus Christ out there at the forefront of this ministry. Try to read, hold up the King James Bible, and say, "This is your standard. I'm not the standard," but you know, there's an authority that comes when you are in ministry, when the Lord puts his hand upon you and says, OK, you're going to go out there and you're going to preach. He he gets your ministry known. I was I was just going to do a video or two and then just go back to the secular world. And the Lord has has blessed this ministry and moved this ministry into 
international teaching type of a thing, you know, I, I have to, you know, I'm not just a nobody. Okay. I, I, again, I've talked about my past and I've preached in churches. There were churches offered to me, the whole thing. Um, you know, it's, uh, I see over there in the comments, who's Brian referring to with this video. Well, I'll, I'll be getting to that later on, but there's times I have to just become a fool in glory and say, okay, this is one of the biggest Bible believing channels on the internet. Um, the Lord has done great things with this ministry. I'm sorry. I even have to bring that up. I don't want to promote myself or whatever else, but if I just, I'm a nobody or whatever, these guys are undermining the ministry. And what will happen is you can learn a lot of good doctrine here. I'm not perfect. I'm not sinless. But what these guys will do is they come along and they learn from me and then they stab me in the back. And what happens is then younger brethren come along and they see this and they think, oh, I thought Brian was good. And, and I guess I guess he's not. And then they go off and they get destroyed by some false prophet out there. So I have to come along and speak like a fool sometimes, a fool in glorying like Paul had to do. You see a lot of Paul's letters. You'll see this thing over and over again of where he is actually having to, you know, come out and say, you know, I, I'm answering this or that. And you see people trying to undermine him all the time and trying to, you know, get people back under the law, say, you know, take a lighter attitude towards sin or whatever else. It's just, it's frustrating. One of the frustrating parts of being in ministry. Um, and I've been in it for a very, very long time. So, um, but let's let's look at the scriptures here. Verse 11, I am become a fool in glorying. Ye have compelled me, for I ought to have been commended of you. For nothing am I behind the very chiefest apostle, chiefest apostles, though I be nothing. I'm nothing. I'm not a I'm not some great guy. You don't worship me. I don't when I come outside in the morning, there's not a you know sunbeam ray of light that comes down. Oh, angels sing. I'm just a, an old hillbilly, a, you know, whatever. But the Lord has used this ministry to save a lot of people. We, we get letters just, there's so many. We have a huge stack of letters here to listen to. I'm not just some YouTube guy or whatever else. And, you know, going to be doing more things in the future, you know, preaching type of stuff. But I'm not going to get into that right now. Verse 12, truly the signs of an apostle, apostle were wrought among you in all patience and signs and wonders and mighty deeds. For what is it wherein ye were inferior to other churches, except it be that I myself was not burdensome to you? Forgive me this wrong. Paul starts to get a little bit sarcastic with him. And, you know, obviously I don't do the signs of an apostle. I'm not an apostle. I get that. But, you know, there's been mighty deeds that have been done as a result of this ministry. There have been some really significant people that have gotten saved and gotten straightened out doctrinally. And all glory goes to the Lord for that. You know, I do my best for the Lord. I don't compromise like most of the other preachers out there. I really try to, you know, come out and, and you know, I, I, I become a fool in, in glory. That's all I can say, you know. But, um, <clears throat> you know, Paul is basically saying to them, for what is it wherein ye were inferior to other churches, except it be that I myself was not burdensome to you. In other words, he's he's being sarcastic because one of the things that he's being attacked for is they're saying basically that Paul is doing this for money. That's been one of the main attacks that's come on me. You know, I get compared to Kenneth Copeland and I think, OK, you know, uh, I'm trying to get raise money for, a you know, forty thousand dollar new office or whatever else uh, or forty thousand or less. And Kenneth Copeland's flying twenty one million dollar private jets. And how is it that people, I mean, how in the world can people compare me to that? And you look at what Kenneth Copeland preaches and what I preach. It's not the same thing. That guy's a devil. But, you know, people get desperate. But Paul's saying, hey, I haven't charged you, you know, so forgive me that wrong. And, you know, it's always funny because usually the people that attack me the most are the ones that, that uh, rarely ever support the ministry. And, you know, people don't need to support me. I don't care. Whatever. That's that's not you know, some kind of standard. If you support me, then you're my friend. And if you don't, then I, you know, then I hate you or something. Not at all. Not at all. But it's almost every single time that I see this, these people come out and they start to nitpick what I do. Not, you know, real true constructive criticism, but just nitpicking every little thing. I mean, there's whole people, there's whole channels on YouTube, lots of them. And their whole ministry is just nitpicking my preaching. That's not a Bible-believing ministry, 
Okay, not at all. But um, verse 14, behold, the third time I'm ready to come to you, and I will not be burdensome to you, for I seek not yours, but you. The children ought not to lay up for the parents, but the parents for the children. Now, spiritually, a lot of you are my children out there. Okay, Paul talks about, you know, Timothy, my own son, Timothy, whom I've begotten, you know, and, and they, there's in a spiritual sense, if I've led you to the Lord, then I'm like a father to you. Now, the Catholics get it wrong because they actually take the title father. You're not supposed to take the title father. So Jesus, when he says about call no man father, he's talking about in a religious sense. Why, how do you know that? Well, because the Bible says to honor thy father and mother. So the title, you know, the name, the word father refers to your who gave birth to you. You're not to take a religious title father, you know, whatever. And some of these people, when they were attacking me, you know, Skype chat going on behind my back of friends of the ministry, I thought, and they were calling me Father Brian. And, and, and these are people that, that I have loved and done things for and, and whatever. And I'm, and I'm, they're, they're calling me Father Brian. And, 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 you know, we had a conversation and supposedly was straightened out and whatever, but they're still going the same direction. And I'm thinking, okay, yeah. And, and, and I'm, I'm very well aware of the fact that they're starting to contact other brethren and trying to pull them away. Like I said, back in Acts chapter 20. We just we're just going to go and you know kind of pull away some other disciples after us and you know get them to leave the Denlinger cult even though you were trained by me. Very very disgusting. Um, but uh, you know I'm laying up for you. By the way, that's why I labor. That's why my videos are coming out for free on YouTube. I could have charged all these years, you know, and been a burden to people, but I chose not to. I had the option of making DVDs, like I started out in ministry way back in 2007, or I can just give things away for free. And I chose to do the free thing so that all members of the body of Christ could, could watch what I do. And I will say this, YouTube was not the best way to do it because YouTube is a cesspool. Um, it's basically preaching to saved and lost, and that's not the way it's supposed to be done in the Bible. YouTube, probably going back, you know, looking at things. I should have been preaching, you know, evangelism. People get get people saved and then teach them doctrinally away from YouTube, because you get lost people coming in hearing doctrine they can't understand it. They they're not capable of understanding doctrine, so they get confused and then they come out and they say, "Denlinger's teaching lordship salvation or this or that." YouTube was not the best way to do it, and I have been rebuked by brethren on that. But then I get saved brethren that, that say, brother, could you do a study on this or that? You know, there are saved people here on YouTube, but there's a lot of lost people, too. So, but uh, verse 15, and I will very gladly spend and be spent for you, though the more abundantly I love you, the less I be loved. Boy, I can relate to that one. I mean, why do I preach so hard on sin? Okay. Because all sin is negative. Every single last bit of it. All sin will hurt you. So if I love you and I see you drinking soda pop. Okay. Is it a sin that you're going to go to hell if you drink soda pop? Of course not. But it's poisonous. Okay. It's got all kinds of toxicity in it. And, and if I love you, I'm going to tell you about that. And I'm going to relate my personal experience from years and years and years of drinking that stuff. And what it did to my health. That's love. And I, the Lord shows me more and more and more stuff. And I think, wow, I got to tell people about this. I got to tell people this is not right. This is wrong here. And that's wrong here. Why? Because I want to make your life better. But the more abundantly I love certain brethren, the less they love me. And the more they want to stab me in the back. We'll, we'll get to here in a little bit what's going on. But, um, but be it so. About all you can do. I did not burden you. Nevertheless, being crafty, I caught you with guile. What's Paul saying? He's basically saying, you know, hey, uh, the uh, the more I, you know, love you, the the, you know, being crafty, you know, because you'll get this thing. I'm crafty, and I caught you with guile. Denlinger's mind controlling people, you know, uh, 
John Cragen over here, I saw you you in the comments and you left the Fennier cult and they still are a sore about that. You know, oh, you know, this young man, he left and he's now part of Fennier's cult. That's what Paul, thing, the same things were happening to Paul. Being crafty, I caught you with guile. You know, I'm catching you, you, you young people out there. I'm, I'm drawing you in here and I'm, I'm catching you with guile and things. Did I make a gain of you by any of them whom I sent unto you? Um, I desired Titus and with him I sent a brother. Did Titus make a gain of you? Walked we not in the same spirit? Walked we not in the same steps? Again, think ye that we excuse ourselves unto you. We speak before God in Christ, but we do all things, dearly beloved, for your edifying. That's the point. I'm doing all things for your edifying. My channel's not monetized. Okay? You're not required to tithe to me. 10% tithe to me or anything else. My goals for the future include producing things for you. If the Lord shows me, hey, uh, flannel shirts are bad. Okay? Uh, they're bad for your health. They're bad for this or that. I'm going to come out against flannel shirts. All right. Whatever the Lord shows me, we go through things. We're living in ways that it's just our life is like a big, huge science experiment. If I can say it that way. Does this work? Does that work? Can I recommend this to brethren? That, you know, does this type of sleep? If you're having insomnia problems, can you know, what do we do about that? If you're having this kind of sickness or that kind of sickness or whatever, how can we tell people how to heal themselves and and what good ways is there to witness? And, and that's that's the desire of my heart. You know, I'm doing everything for your edification. That's you know what I'm doing. You know, if I was like, I, it's, I get the biggest accusation against me is I'm in this thing for the money. Um, yeah. Uh, if I was in things for the money, I would be monetized. I would never preach the way I preach. And more than likely, I'd probably go back to the art world. Although the art world probably right now is pretty bad because of all this coronavirus stuff. So, but uh, verse 20, for I fear lest when I come, I shall not find you such as I would. And that I should be found unto you such as you would not. Lest there to be debates, envyings, wraths, strifes, backbitings, whisperings, swelling, swellings, tumults. And thus when I come again, my God will humble me among you, and that I shall bewail many which have sinned already, and have not repented of the uncleanness and fornication and lasciviousness which they have committed. What is lasciviousness? Just doing whatever your flesh wants. And Paul's saying, I'm worried here because I feel like if I come to you, like if I would come to some of the people that are stabbing me in the back and I look into actually what they're doing with their life, I would quickly realize uh, there's a whole lot of sin here. And, you know, I've, like I said, I, I'm not new to this. Okay. This has been the same pattern over the years. Everything's fine. Everything's great. Brother Brian, you're, you're really a blessing. And all of a sudden, bam, I kick something that you're doing and you don't want to give up. And all of a sudden, it's just, okay, now I'm going to look for sin in you, uh, meaning me. And um, I used to do it. As a false convert, I did that very thing. Some preacher would stand up and he would he would kick something I was doing that was that I knew was wrong and, and not some kind of true liberty issue. Again, liberty issues are esteeming one day above, above another, uh, your diet, but being eating herbs or meat. Um, and the thing of a physical head covering, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Those are the three, okay? That's just the way it is. Um, so I'm not going to go off on a big thing there. But, you know, there are certain things that people are doing that are very wicked. And uh, and they're trying to justify it. They're saying, well, it's liberty. It's a liberty issue. It's just liberty. Uh, brethren, if it's not, if it doesn't fall under those three things, it's not liberty. Um, and you know, again, I am become a fool in glory. I have to talk about my personal experience. You know, it's kind of like the thing of my, my son. A lot of times he'll come up and he'll say, well, dad, I wasn't doing this. Or I don't, you know, you don't know what you're talking about essentially to me. And I say, um, son, you're five. I am 44, soon to be 45. I'm 40 years older than you, son. Um, I, don't talk down to me, little boy. Well, I have to do that to the members of the body of Christ. I've been through a lot of things. Okay. And I'm, I'm sorry. I have to be a fool in glory. My infirmities, the things that I've done that are really stupid. 
okay, you get some, I'll just say it this way. You get some young guy and he's been drinking for two years, drinking alcohol for two years. And he meets a man that's been, that was drinking for 40 years. And that guy has all kinds of health problems. And he says, young man, I need to tell you what you're doing wrong. Your drinking of alcohol is going to mess you up and it, it's going to give you this and it's going to give that. And the, and the young guy says, well, I don't see a problem with it. I don't see anything wrong. I've been, I've been doing this for a while now and I don't see anything. Who are you to tell me, old man? Um, you need to listen to the voice of experience. That's why the Bible talks about, you know, Paul being like a father to them and they're like his children. Paul saying it, I know about religion. Okay. I was raised at the feet of Gamaliel, Pharisee, the whole deal. I know what these guys are trying to mess you up on. I understand these things. I'm trying to be here, trying to be humble, but you're compelling me to talk like a fool and I have to throw my qualifications out there and whatever. And I have to do that now. Okay. Um, the, the big things that are, that are coming up with this, this conspiracy is my stands against rock music and my stands against video games. And these, these brethren are saying, you know, these, well, I'll say this way that these guys are saying it's a Liberty issue. It doesn't matter. It's not a Liberty issue. It's not a Liberty issue. And I am, again, I am speaking. I have to become a fool in glory. I'm speaking from experience. I know how bad those things are and how they mess you up. I know I spent years doing both. I come from a family that went, that my oldest brother was a rock, uh, Christian rock guy, had a band. We went to his concerts. I saw what that music did to his children um, when they were in the womb and they were, his wife was at the concerts and everything. Um, I saw what it's done to him since then. I've seen he goes into, I mean, my oldest brother goes into churches, you know, church buildings, and he will actually bring rock music in and drive the older, older people away. It's wicked. It's completely wicked. Um, I've seen it. I've, I've been there. I was the guy on the other end. Okay. I was the guy in the past that would attack the preachers who would come out against rock music. I was the guy that was there that would attack those who came out against video games. And the, the, like I, the, the video games I used to play were mild. I mean, some of you young people that have played these video games, these first person shooter things, these metal, metal gear and, and uh, what's the one uh, grand theft auto and some of the stuff. I've never played those games. I've seen screenshots from them and things. I mean, it's, it's so graphic. It's just, how can you justify this stuff? Witches, spell casting, just all kinds of demonic stuff in these modern video games. And it, well, it's just an issue of liberty. It's not an issue of liberty. And what's happening is there's a lot of novices that are coming out. They're not called into full-time ministry. They just want to bring up a video and whatever else. Well, that's good um, to put, bring out videos. But when you start teaching doctrine and it's false doctrine, then we have a problem. Let me show you two other verses of, or passages of scripture here real quickly. And then we'll go on to talking about a little bit more detail here. Um, First Thessalonians chapter five. Um, verse 12 and 13. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you. OK, there are men in within the church that are over you in the Lord. OK, men that give their life. To preaching and teaching the word of God, men that God have chosen or God has chosen to, you know, be in ministry because of their life experiences, because of stuff that they've been through. Um, the Lord chose me for this. Uh, just it's that, that simple. What all has been done with this ministry has been it's a shock to me. What all has happened? I'll say it that way. Um, but, you know. Continue here and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake, sake and be at peace among yourselves. Uh, I, I, I don't understand how you have, you know, a guy that's you, you think very highly of. And just like that, he says something that you don't like and just whip and twist and start to criticize every little thing he does and just go back through and look for heresies in his teaching. And I just think, wow, what on earth happened? You know, um, as many of you know, one of my heroes in the faith is Peter Ruckman. 
I got the Ruckman reference Bible here. I actually had a brother um, in the Lord that I was, used to be in ministry with. He gave me this Bible. Uh, when it came out, the Ruckman reference, Ruckman reference Bibles came out. Yeah, I didn't, there's nothing in the front, but he bought that thing for me. A member of our house church at that point in time. And he said, um, you know, uh, well, I'm sorry, my mind got a little bit sidetracked. I was looking at somebody's comment over here. But I think very highly of Peter Ruckman. And I'm just going to tell you right up front, uh, I have enough dirt on Ruckman that I could expose him, okay, as being a almost – some of the stuff he was extremely heretical in. And I just literally listened to a sermon this morning from Ruckman, audio sermon while I was, I was over making uh, breakfast. And um, we sleep in a tiny home and we make breakfast in another thing. That's another issue at our property because it's really hot right now. So we don't want to, you know, we cook on a wood cook stove. So, but I was listening to Peter Ruckman and I, I a couple times my mouth dropped open. I thought, what in the world? He just said that. And I mean, this sermon literally is not even available at Bible Baptist bookstore anymore. I mean, the, the heresies he said in there are just, I'm thinking, you know, Brother Ruckman, what in the world? He said, well, then you should come out and expose the man. No, because you see, I esteem him very highly in love for his work's sake. I mean, if I ever find out that Ruckman was somehow a Freemason or some kind of thing like that, I'd see the actual proof of that or whatever that, you know, he was just, you know, somehow faking things. Well, then, OK, I might come out and have to say something about that. But uh, the vast majority of the, the man's work is amazing. And, and he brought me out of some really deep heresies. And I'm thankful for that. And I am very careful. I, I've said stuff about Peter Ruckman over the years. Sure. Uh, he's not perfect. There were some things he was very far off on. Um, but to come out and just just tear him down and just I'm going to just become a, a Peter Ruckman exposer and just make video after video after video after video attacking the man. I'm not going to do that. That would not be right for me to do. And I met Peter Ruckman in person and thanked him for the, you know, for straightening me out on a bunch of different stuff. Um, show you another verse here real quickly. First uh, Timothy chapter five, verse one, rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father and the younger men as brethren. Um, you know, and it goes down to say about, you know, them that sin you know, against an elder. Where's the verse at? Uh, oops. Excuse me. Um, yeah, verse 19. Against an elder receive not an accusation, but before two or three witnesses, them that sin rebuke before all that others also may fear. It doesn't say those that, that say something that isn't quite clear or whatever else. Yeah, I, I get that all the time. I say a Christian will not swear or a Christian will not. And, and then they say, see, he's teaching that if you swear one time, you're going to hell and you're never were truly saved. It's not what I said. OK, that if you actually listen to what I'm saying. And, and understand that the totality of my ministry, you understand I'm trying to get people convicted of their sin. And if they're not saved, get them saved. And if you're doing things that are bad, stop doing it. Okay. Sin is negative. But what I hear is I see false, false uh, professing Christians and they just cuss freely, no convictions at all. And then they claim to be saved. And that's what I'm going against. Right. And, and so I have to preach a little bit harder for some of that stuff. But see, people will twist my words. And then they'll say, you know, um, we're going against, you know, uh, Brian, I have to come out against him. And then they, and then that's what their ministry is from then on. So, I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a rather dumb guy. If you haven't figured that out by now, right? I'm a country guy, right? Uh, uh, I'm not highly educated. I try my best. Okay. I'm, I'm a little bit uh, rude in my speech. Sometimes I get a little bit ticked off. I, I show emotion. Oh, no, it's terrible. Um, but brethren, have some grace. I mean, how would you like it if I went through and dissected everything about your life? You know, um, if you've learned from the ministry here, by all means, hey, please, you know, help support me, help help lift me up in prayer and say, hey, hey, don't take it easy on Brother Brian. You know, he might not have said that thing exactly perfect, but I mean, come on here. So, you know, 
But uh, getting back up there to verse one, rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father and the younger men his brother. Again, younger men are not supposed to be in full-time ministry. Um, I think the, the best example of that is Jesus Christ. He didn't start his ministry until he was 30. Okay, he could start a lot earlier than that. I mean, he's God manifest in the flesh walking around, but he was showing a pattern, I believe, for when, when a young man is, is qualified for a full-time ministry. Um, why? Can't you learn the Bible in a few years? Can't you be raised that way and whatever, and you're ready for full-time ministry when you're 20 or something? Uh, no, um, because there's a lot of life experiences that are going to teach you things. It's going to match up with the Bible, and you'll say, wow, okay, you know, yeah, I've seen this. I've, I've experienced that. You know, um, I mean, if you have any anybody in the military, I have my issues with the military, but, but uh, there are some things that they have right. And uh, some guy that's been in combat, uh, a real combat veteran, um, he has some wisdom that you're not going to get from uh, West Point or other, uh, you know, military academies. Okay, you, you learn some things when you're getting shot at, and when you've fallen down and you've gotten injured on the battlefield and whatever else, and you know the fear and the and the, all the emotions that go along with. Yeah, um, I learned a bunch of things when I was in my twenties. All right. Um, how to do things and how not to do things. And so, you know, I'm I'm an older man now and I have more sense to me. I mean, I'm looking back in my 20s. I wouldn't have been ready for ministry. No way. Um, so, um, but I'm going to I'm going to go over a couple of things here yet. Uh, but basically, just to explain what's happening here. Um, a while back, I saw a guy I thought was a friend of the ministry. Um, let me get this thing back up again here. Okay. Uh, this guy here, um, his name's Jake Mays, and he came out with a study right here. What does the Bible actually say about music? And, uh, and in this study, he goes in here and he shows, uh, see, see if where he does it here. He shows this tract and it says, you know, drums in the church. And he says that uh, there are no drums um, in the Bible. This tract says that there's no drums in the Bible, but he says, you know, that timbrels are in there. Uh, well, first and foremost, the word drums, let me get the Bible back up here again. If you type in drum, uh, dumb is in there, which Heavy metal drums are dumb, but the uh, drums are not in the Bible. So that is true. Um, and again, you type in drums, the plural of drum, it's not in there. Okay. Um, and then he says, well, you know, timbrel is in there. And uh, tabret, timbrels and tabrets, they're in there, is what uh, he said in his study here. And that that somehow then gives, it's okay, you know, that you have the, rock and roll drums or the contemporary drums or whatever else and that's there and so then because you have a timbrel well if you study what a timbrel is a timbrel is like a little tambourine you know like a little handheld little timbrel okay i'm not going to try to google search the thing or whatever because it probably come up with vexing images but you know do the study a timbrel a tabret is a little small tambourine okay it's not a big set of drums that's amplified and electrified that it's so much sound that you get the big heavy driving beat that people can hear from miles away. You know, um, that's not the same thing. Right. And to try and make that as an argument that, that somehow music is a matter of personal preference and whatever, um, there's a big problem there. But uh, he says another thing in here, see if I can find it. I don't, I don't have any timestamps for this stuff. Okay. Here he says it. We'll see if we can hear this. Oh, sorry. Whilst wicked men think about your own music. I mean, if you want to know what wicked singers think about the music they play, you know, ACDC, Led Zeppelin, you know, Alice Cooper, you know, if you want to know what they think, you can read that. Um, um, to read uh, Spellback by uh, Jack Chitt. Okay. And, and what he's trying to say here is that they just, it's all about the quotes of these secular rock musicians. 
And you know, you get I have the book right here that he just showed inside rock music. Okay, and they have all the stuff. There's a um, thing from some rock band right there, you know, the pentagram right there, Baphomet. And uh, there's a bunch of quotes from these guys in here, but uh, you know, here's a I mean, he just he basically makes it seem like there's no there's no scripture at all in the thing, and you know, again, uh, more about Christian rock. What is Christian rock? More about rock. Music in the Bible. Okay. And I mean, we used to give this book out. The Bible, Bible Believers Fellowship, our old house church. And there's just so many verses of scripture in here. And I showed this in my one thing. Good to, guide to selecting good music. Again. Kind of see it there. You know, um, you know, and so, I mean, right there, um, just as, as plain and simple, the, all the proof you need to see. Peter Ruckman did a whole series of, of videos, um, a whole a whole series of, 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 not videos, a whole series of tapes going through the history of music. And showing why the heavy driving beat of voodoo and, and Santeria and, and things and witchcraft, how it goes into rock music. And it's it's wrong. It's wicked. I mean, I don't know of any real preacher that has ever stood for rock music. Ever. For any reason. And again, I came up with my videos exposing the whole thing of rock music. And it's just, oh, you know, whatever. Um, and, you know, just to show you again who this is. Um, you go over here, get this video. And here's a live stream, and you can see right down in here is Jake Mays. And we were rebuking Jeremy Carter. But now you go to uh, Jake Mays' channel, and lo and behold, right there is Jeremy Carter. And again, the brethren let me know about this. And, and he's back to, you know, the whole thing of Jeremy Carter. And Jeremy Carter is a con man. Um, he's a very, very wicked guy. And he's just, you know, buddy, buddy with all these guys that is, again, the I'm a former Denlinger cult member and all this stuff. And that and now their ministry is nothing more than attacking me. And they use profanity and all kinds of stuff in their videos. And that's Jeremy Carter. And now Jake is back with him and he's pulling in um, this guy here. Another one that was involved with the public rebuke. Um, again, he's pulling in Tim and Tim's coming up with all kinds of stuff, you know. Well, we got to go through your videos, and I have to critique this and that, and 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 you need to take your video down on uh, the video game thing, rebuking the video game playing, and and all this stuff. In other words, I'm supposed to lower my standards, and my standards line up with the scriptures, you know. And and their their big thing that they're doing is they're saying, well, the Bible doesn't openly, you know, uh, condemn certain sins. So if it doesn't openly say, thou shalt not listen to rock music then it must be okay, and it's a matter of personal preference. It's not a matter of personal preference. I mean, if the Holy Spirit is in you, and you hear the rock music, there's something that you just, uh, uh, you know, and you know it It feeds the flesh. And you say, oh, that you're some kind of puritanical. I used to listen to rock music. I went to an Aerosmith Jackal concert, you know, for my graduation. I mean, it's just, you know, it's, it's, it's just, I, I, I can't even believe I'm having this conversation. I mean, I came out of the whole modern church movement and whatever else and all the CCM stuff and, and, and whatever. I, I just, I don't understand. I, I came into the Bible believing thing and it's just, nobody was for rock music, you know, and these video games and stuff too. And, and I'm just thinking, uh, you know, I mean, can't you see what's happening to our country? But there's time for video games. I mean, we need to get more serious about the Bible and, 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 and things, you know, and I, I actually had forgotten about this video and I was, I thought about it this morning. I thought, you know, I haven't, I remember doing this and I thought, I don't know if it's even still up anymore, but uh, way back a long time ago, um, back when I was with Bible Believers Fellowship, I actually did this video here proving, you know, Catholics love contemporary Christian music, Catholic radio station here, Spirit FM. Right there, you can see the, the way for Christ thing and whatever else. And, you know, 
and they they just love these contemporary Christian bands. And again, I used to be on forums, you know, rock, heavy metal, rock and roll forums. And I got saved and the Lord convicted me. And I started, you know, hey, this stuff is wrong. It's wicked. And these Catholics are just defending, you know, Protestant groups. Like uh, what Third Day and some of the others, it, it's in there. And they're promoting, you know, contem contemporary Christian music bands. You know, and I did this, uh, another video here. I'll show this one. You know, um, atheist Christian rocker tries to murder his wife. It's about this guy named Tim Lambesis right there. And, uh, I mean, it definitely looks Christian. I mean, you know, I'm sure Christians, you know, 100 years ago would have thought that, that guy is a saint, you know. Uh, the look and everything else. And, and the guy's a Christian rock guy. And it turns out he gets into prison for hiring a hitman to murder his wife. And he gets into prison and he says, oh, by the way, actually, I should tell the truth. I'm, uh, I'm actually an atheist. And so many of these contemporary Christian artists are that way. They're not even real. Uh, Roger Martinez, somebody brought that up. Uh, the Thing of Vengeance Rising, uh, a band I used to listen to. It was a death metal Christian band. And Roger Martinez, um, he's now a member of the, well, I don't know if he's even still alive, but he left Vengeance Rising and, he's, and he joined the Church of Satan. Uh, Dr. Terry Watkins has a bunch of stuff on that. Dial the Truth Ministries. I mean, this stuff is, it's, I just, I don't understand. I just literally, I'm, I'm looking at these people that are defending this stuff and I'm thinking, how in the world can you defend this? I, I, I just, I'm, I'm so frustrated. I, I don't get it. Um, and, you know, and then another one that, that people, you know, in this group have come out against is this one here, a Christian will not. And, you know, they, they go through this, and I'm not going to play the video. You can watch it. Um, just look it up on my channel. And uh, they get all upset about this, you know, that I came out, and I, I you know, had these different standards, and, you know, um, you know this is just, uh, oh, you're, you're being pharisaical, Brian, and you're, you're, um, you're, you're, you're being legalistic. You're back work, backloading works, salvation, all this stuff. And I just, it's making me dizzy in my head, and I'm thinking, <laughs> I don't get it. I don't get it. I mean, I have I have disagreements with some of the brethren on the the thing of you know whether you can celebrate certain holidays or whatever else, but, um, you know, and going back and forth. I literally had a brother come to this location here in Bridgewater to my front door, lives north of me, and he literally came and he said, "Brother," he said, "I love you. I love your ministry, but you're wrong on the holiday thing. I don't. I'm very much against Christmas." He said, you're against Easter. I'm against Easter. But he said, I'm former Catholic. I'm very much against the whole Christmas thing and whatever else. And we had a nice discussion and he left. We shook hands. God bless you, brother. He left disagreeing with me and I standing there disagreeing with him. OK. You know, we can debate that back and forth. Rock music. There is no debate. OK. And you can get into all these little fine things of, well, how much beat is acceptable? How much, you know, can you electrify instruments? And can you, brethren, there's, there's a clear line there, okay? When you really get into it, if it's something that you can tell, you look at the atmosphere that it's creating, it's wrong. Um, you know, the video game thing, again, I understand you can make little arguments. Well, if it's online chess or checkers or something, or what if it's this or what if it's that or, you know, whatever. I mean, some of that stuff is just, you know, I don't even know how to say it. But, you know, full on defending rock music, full on um, defending, you know, video games and whatever else that are just violent. And, well, you know, if it's okay if once in a while you play it or I, I, I and, and the whole thing is, you know, I got to say this. We came, you know, to the office here the one time. There's all this stuff just blowing up. And I'm thinking, OK, what's going on here? I'm, I'm not even in a lot of this stuff. I don't even know what's going on. You know, we're trying to get work done and whatever else. And we come in and there's all this stuff that's going on behind my back. And I'm just thinking, you know, it's frustrating. It's frustrating because I know where it goes. And then there's young people that come along. I've been told about this. There's younger people that come along and they look and they see this infighting and they see, you know, hey, I've been learning a lot from Brother Brian, but now all of a sudden this group I'm involved with, they're stabbing him in the back and they're saying heresy, heresy, heresy. And they're saying, oh, wait a second. I guess I shouldn't listen to Brian now. 
huh? I'm confused. You know, and some of the stands that these people are taking are just absurd. You know, these conspirators is what they are. You know, and yeah, I got I got to say this this thing of this uh, video game deal. Um, show you this quick. Just heard about this. Uh, brother was telling me about this. The FDA just approved um, a prescription video game. <laughs> you just think, oh, brother. Uh, so I guess now in the future, if I preach against video games, now people will say, you're preaching against, you know, pres rightly prescribed drugs. There are people who need their video games. You know, how dare you preach against those things? Oh, man. <laughs> Talk about when the transgressors are come to the full, you know, I just think, oh, man. But I guess, you know, that'll be the way of the future now. And that, you know, maybe they'll have video games and it'll be, you know, this is the level of mental health that you'll achieve from playing this game. You know, this this video game is certified by the FDA to improve your vision and your mental clarity and your blah, blah, blah. This one here isn't so much as good. You know, they'll have ratings, I guess, maybe eventually of the level of, of stuff or whatever. And, you know, and, and I have to say this, OK, just to restate this. I got saved. It wasn't just boom, instant sanctification. I got saved when I was, I think, 26 years old. Again, I'm sorry my memory escapes me. A lot has happened in the last, you know, nearly 20 years for me. Um, and when I got saved, I was struggling with pornography, with rock music, with video game addiction. And I mean addiction. Uh, playing for hours and hours and hours and things. I was a loser. Okay? I was a big-time loser. And I, and I did a lot of uh, cool stuff, you know. I, again, I see that in my comments, and they, well, I do all these cool things, and I play video games, so I'm not a loser. Um, no, I was still a loser, and you're still a loser, too, if you're playing video games. You're losing those five things I mentioned, your time, your physical health, your mental health, um, your money. Things are expensive. You could be doing other things to make money. And your relationships. Yeah. Oh, I don't agree. Well, whatever. <laughs> Can't really help you there, but, uh, you know, there you have that, the whole thing. But this is the hymn I mentioned earlier that, um, let me get this thing in here. <clears throat> um, let me zoom in here a little bit so you can see this better. Very beautiful old hymn. Um, but this is the one we sang last night. And it just, this is what I'm trying to get across to you out there if you're messing around with video games if you're messing around with rock music um you have to get to a place where you say you know what this is an idol in my life these things are causing me to give into my flesh um i'm i'm wasting my time with these video games uh this rock music is is hurting me it's hurting my relationship to jesus christ i need to put this on the altar and it says you have longed for sweet peace and for faith to increase and have earnestly fervently prayed but you cannot have rest or be perfectly blessed until all on the altar is laid. Present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. He died for you. Jesus died for you. You die for him. Hey, if this thing here is wicked, and it is wicked, you know, I mean, these rock, this rock music, proven, proven, proven. And this Tim uh, he had a problem with me saying that the God of the Bible is a God of science. Um, I, have a, I have a major problem with that. I didn't say a whole lot about it. I talked to him about this thing. And I have a major problem with that. There is no science outside of God. Okay. The Bible warns about science falsely so called. If there is something that is truly demonstrable, testable, observable, you know, whatever, something that is under the realm of real science, it'll line up with God in the Bible every single time. And science can be used to prove the negative effects of rock music on you, right? Play rock music in, in situations where high concentration is, is, is required. It doesn't work. Play rock music in a situation where there's, you know, the flesh is involved or whatever else. Rock music will boost the flesh. It lifts it up. Scientific proof. The people themselves behind rock music saying, Yes, it's satanic. Yes, it's wicked. Yes, we're trying to, to ruin people and cause a revolution and whatever else. Oh, well, we'll just kind of ignore that. Just kind of, well, you know, 
not a big deal. It's up to you. You can you can have your own preference. No, you can't. No, you can't. Um, you're supposed to lay everything on the altar. Um, <clears throat> you know, is your all on the altar of sacrifice laid? Your heart does the spirit control. You can only be blessed and have peace and sweet rest as you yield him your body and soul. And that's going to take years. Okay, let me say that one more time. And that's going to take years to accomplish. You're not going to just have perfect sanctification like that. Not going to happen. But you have to listen to older men of God, older preachers. That will tell you the truth and say, you better get away from this. You better get away from that. Why? Because I was in that stuff. And it messed me up. And I have testimonies of other brothers, other sisters in the Lord, and they were doing these sins and it messed them up too. Listen to the voice of experience. I am a father, spiritually speaking. I don't take the title father, as I said earlier in this video. I'm not going to take the title father, but I am a father to you, many of you spiritually. You've learned from me as a child learns from their father. Don't think that you're smarter than me. Don't think that you can come out and say, well, I'm just going to put Brian down because I don't agree with him in this. Respect. Show some proper respect here. That's. I think that's the part that's really making me mad. Because you know, a lot of these guys, they're just coming out and there's no respect. Would you walk with the Lord in the light of his word and have peace and contentment all way? Would you like to do that? I mean, who doesn't want that? Have peace and contentment always, always. You must do his sweet will to be free from all ill on the altar your all you must lay. I still get convicted over sin. I still get, you know, things the Lord shows me and I think, wow, I've been doing that all these years. I'm sorry, Lord. I didn't realize that was bad. <sighs> you know, and it's, it's kind of, a, I mean, give you a good one. Sugar. I can show you my literally my baby book and my mother was writing about, you know, that she's been putting white sugar into my food as a baby and that now I'm eating better. I was raised on sugar. I mean, I used to go, I told my wife and my son these stories. I would go to this candy store and I would get a couple pounds of jelly beans to eat while I was playing video games. And I drink it down with soda pop, Dr. Pepper usually. I mean, pounds of candy, just eating sugar, 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 sugar. I have a very difficult time when I go to a grocery store and I see a lot of that old sugar stuff. I used to, oh, there's little Debbie's. Oh, man, I, oh, I used to love those. Oh, there's some jelly beans. Oh, look at this. Look at, you say, well, brother, so you're saying sugar is going to send me to hell? I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying it's something, it's an idol in my life that I look at and I say, okay, if I am, if I want to be really at the very best level of sanctification, is sugar going to help with that? And the answer is no. So, I've gotten a lot of other stuff out of my life. I'm I'm gotten victory over pornography. I've gotten victory over video games. I've gotten victory over rock music. I've gotten victory over, over a lot of those sins of the flesh. And now I'm getting saying, okay, Lord, you know, I've I've achieved perfection. I'm here. And <laughs> no, the Lord's saying, uh, okay, son, um, there's a whole bunch of other stuff that needs to go. Is your all on the altar? Is everything on the altar? Is there anything that you are saying, Lord, okay, I'll sacrifice stuff, but don't make me give up whatever. It's wrong. You have to yield everything to Jesus Christ. And there's times I fall back into it. I, you know, I mess around with sugar and whatever else, and it, it, it gets me tired, and I go through the, the insulin spikes and crashes and all that stuff. And, I'm laying there, uh, you know, and my wife says, uh, was it worth it? No, <laughs> you know, she doesn't have quite the problem that I do with it. And I thank, I thank Lord for bringing my wife into my life. And again, I, I get attacked by my enemies. Old Dunninger's wife controls him and things. Uh, well, in certain, words, in certain areas, uh, when I'm too weak, yeah, she does help me. She helped me get away from video game addiction. And she's helped me with the whole sugar thing getting better and better and stronger and stronger. And I'll tell you what, going through every day, just let's eat something good. Let's, you know, whatever is there on the, in front of me, what's going to happen to me if I eat superfoods every day? Really, really good, high nutrition, nutrient dense foods. What will happen to me? 
can I become a better servant for the Lord by eating this stuff? That's where I'm at right now. And, you know, you might look and think, man, he's really, you know, a fanatic or something. Well, many years of going through this. I want to be a stronger servant for Jesus Christ. I don't want to mess around with my flesh. And what happens is I see people that are struggling with these things, younger people. And I try to say, hey, you know, you really ought to quit this. And, and I say it in my sermons that I'm very nice and whatever, you know. Um, and then I and then I see they just keep on coming out with it and out with it and out with it. And I think, OK, you're not getting it. I'm going to have to rebuke harshly. Again, the Bible talks about that. Let me just show you here real quickly. Um, in the book of Titus, chapter 1, it talks about, uh, you know, if any be blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful ch children, not accused of riot or unruly, for a bishop must be blameless. Is that going to happen right when you get saved? I honestly don't think I'm a bishop at this point. I think there's still some sanctification stuff I need to get out of my life. I, I'm, I think I'm still somewhat young. <laughs> In that and I try I mean I'm trying to do my best but this YouTube platform is just not cutting it um, that's why our desire for a new office where we can run the ministry and I'm going to start dealing with people in the local area uh, this place here is just uh, it's a it's a terrible place and I've always been very embarrassed by people coming here and whatever but in the future um, big announcement here at the end um, our new office is going to be open to people coming and actually physically meeting with us. And it's, I'm gonna to try to get a more into actual preaching and teaching in a non YouTube platform because I'm tired of YouTube censorship. That's another issue. Um, the husband of one wife, not a problem there. Having faithful children, not accused of one. Okay, I, for Bishop must be blameless as the steward of God, not self-willed, not soon angry. Still working on that one, not given to wine, not a problem. I hate wine, I think it tastes like cough syrup. <laughs> No striker, not given to filthy lucre, not a problem, not a problem. A lover of hospitality. Again, I've wanted to do that, but I haven't been able to because of this wretched place here. Um, future place will definitely be able to do that more. A lover of good men, sober, just, holy, temperate. Um, holding, face to, holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may be, be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. Yeah, come on in, son. My son's got his Legos back here, so... He'll be walking past. Um, but anyhow, uh, for there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they have the circumcision. And it goes down through there. But, you know, they say, well, you shouldn't be so harsh. And uh, Tim actually accused me of using mind control because I was yelling in one of my videos. Uh, that's not what I'm talking about. You know, if somebody's saying you need to get rid of this, that stuff is sin. It's wickedness. That's not that's not playing with your voice. When you play with your voice, you say that God wants you to be here today. And that's mind control. OK, being passionate about something, raising your voice is not mind control. So whatever there. But uh, and I'm sorry, by the way, because some of these guys were actually deleting people's comments and things. And, you know, pray for these guys. They're, they're being led away. But with the error of the wicked, you know, evil communications corrupt good manners. That's what's going on. These people went behind my back. Um, you know, and, and are stabbing me in the back and things and it's just um, disgusting. But, but uh, you know, it says here, this witness is, re is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith. Okay. Um, sharp rebukes are something that a bishop, a man of God will do. There are some times that you have to just be very sharp in your rebuke. All right. And, and. So I was not wrong for what I did, uh, rebuking video games, rebuking the rock music thing, um, because I know where it leads. I was in it. I was part of that stuff. I know the sin that it it, it leads to. So um, I think that's probably it. Uh, I didn't finish the, I don't think I finished the, uh, is your all on the altar. Um, oh, we never can know what the Lord will bestow of the blessings for which we have prayed. Till our body and soul he doth fully control, and our all on the altar is laid. Absolutely beautiful. Who can tell all the love he will send from above, and how happy our hearts will be made. Of the fellowship sweet we shall share at his feet, when our all on the altar is laid. 
is your own on the altar of sacrifice laid. Your heart does the spirit control. You can only be blessed and have peace and sweet rest as you yield him your body and soul. If you've never heard the song, please look it up. It's a beautiful old hymn. And it's so very true. It's a challenge to each of us. Lay everything on the altar. Present your body a living sacrifice. Holy. Holy and acceptable unto the Lord. I mean, you look at the things that I stand for, the things that I'm, I'm trying to point people to. I'm trying to improve your health spiritually and physically. I'm trying to, to protect you from what's coming and things. I'm, I, I put a lot of energy. I mean, it's, it's all we do. You know, uh, I mean, so um, so anyhow, I, I, I haven't been able to look at a lot of your comments and things. I don't I don't know what people are all are saying, but, um, you know, I just I'm, I'm not angry. Uh, I'm not here to, to call uh, anybody heretic. You you're going to burn in hell. The Lord rebuke you or something. Uh, whatever. I don't have time for that. Um, but, but brethren, rock music is bad. It's, it's so bad. It's bad for your health. Video games are a waste of your time. They, I mean, especially these modern ones. I mean, it just, so enough of that. Um, I do have an announcement I want to make and I need some prayer on this. Um, we made an offer on a new ministry office. The offer was accepted. Uh, it was a few days ago. I haven't heard back from, from the realtor. Uh, it's 12 minutes away from where we live. Uh, very, very close. Um, and uh, it's definitely going to be a, you know, it's a very nice place. Um, less than what we were thinking, you know, is, it's a, uh, uh, I'm getting into the details of it and whatever else, but it's a very affordable place. It's the, the house is beautiful, in my opinion. Um, and the amazing part of it is, which I'll show the video, we're going to do a walkthrough of the place when we have everything switched over. Hopefully everything works out good. Um, but the the thing that's interesting is it's an older house. 1920 was when it was built, I think. But it's got a garage attached that is literally pulling down the rest of the house. It's it's literally it's got a big gap, you know, between where the garage connects to the house because here in northern Maine a lot of times people build the house and then they build kind of like a little walkway to the garage or out to the barn you'll see these they call them strung out houses it's so funny you'll see a house and it's got another thing built onto the back and then another thing and another thing and it goes the whole way to the barn so you don't have to walk outside through the snow in the winter time kind of funny um but it's it goes it goes uh it, please be quiet okay it goes um it goes house and then out to the garage and the garage has got some major problems, which I'd like to, uh, you know, have some, you know, I'd like to hear some opinions on if everything goes through and we get the place, but, uh, it's really falling down. So it, it, that took down the value of the house, but the house is a really nice place. Very, very well built, very solid place. So I'm really going to be able to take the ministry to a whole new level. And I'm really, really excited about that. Um, you know, uh, the thing of a, a weekly study live is something that we're really thinking about doing. A non, but the whole thing is we have to do a non YouTube platform. YouTube is just a, a vile, <laughs> wicked um, place. There, I hate the censoring of speech, I hate the fact that people you know, can just take my stuff and cut it up and whatever else. And it just, I, I I'm, I'm just tired of, of YouTube. Um, and I want to be able to have a place that's a lot safer. Um, so, um, safer for the brethren, say it that way, where you can come and not have all the vexation of, and everything of the YouTube trolls coming along and, and people making trouble and whatever. Um, and I can get into more preaching and teaching of the word of God. Um, so, um, so please just pray that everything goes through. Um, I don't know why I haven't heard back from our realtor. 
Um, so I don't know, but uh, we'll definitely be, you know, um, yeah, it's, I don't think it, there's not really a um, thing about bidding. I see a comment over here. Um, there's, it's tell you what, let me go to the uh, YouTube studio thing. I'll do it that way. Um, it's not really an, an issue of bidding as in, uh, you know, like a auction or anything. Um, I don't know if somebody would come along and offer more money or, or whatever else. Um, I mean, if they do, they do. I mean, it, it's, we've really been, you know, agonizing over this whole thing and having to drive this whole deal and, you know, hour and a half and whatever. And, uh, you know, so we were really fervently trying to find a place and we looked at this place when we went to see it and I, and I said, you know, Hey, this has really worked for us and which in our range and whatever else. And, um, and I just, I told the realtor our offer and I said, you know, I just have total peace one way or the other. If the Lord says no, then the answer is no. We'll keep looking. If the answer is yes, then great. Praise the Lord. But uh, I don't know if we're going to get it or not at this point in time. Um, so we'll see. <laughs> I mean, he said it that they accepted our offer. So it's not really a matter of that we're going to get outbid or something, but we might be. I don't know. Um, but if everybody could just pray about that. Um, question, would you ever consider doing a video with Eric John Phelps again? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I saw he did a video not long ago about um, the Psalm 2 proves the three persons of the Godhead or whatever. And, uh, and I listened to it. You know, because I, I listen to him occasionally just to see what he has to say about what are the Jesuits and the Jesuit connections to this or that. Um, you know, uh, and he, and what he said was pretty good, except the only real issue I had was saying that there's different persons when the Bible doesn't teach that. So um, I don't know. Um, a lot of what he said was pretty good, but I don't know if I'd ever do a live stream with him again. Um So, um, oh, and another thing I was going to show, I, I did talk about the thing of police lives matter. And I said about a police officer gave my son his uh, retired arm patch. Well, there it is right there. I remembered it this time. So it was a really, really sweet thing for that officer to do to my, for my son, you know, literally his old arm patch and he took it off and gave it to my son. Just because my son was a, a, you know, just a, a cute little boy that came up to him and wasn't afraid of the police officer. Um, that just there's so many things are just so vexing to my soul now, and you know, trying to keep my mind focused on okay, you know, I'm not trying to beat anybody up or trying to attack people or whatever else. I don't want to do this stuff. I don't. I don't want to get into this in fighting and I got to call out this guy and this one's a heretic and rebuking people. Man, I don't, I don't want to do this stuff. I, I just want to preach the, the gospel. Um, and I want to deal with people person in person. That's something that, you know, I did for years. Again, I'm not, I'm not just some YouTube dude or something. Uh, you know, I, I went door to door. I preached on the street. I preached in churches, uh, church buildings, which there's a whole lot of problems with those places. Um, I actually heard out in California, I don't know if this is a national thing or not, but they're actually saying that churches aren't allowed to sing because of coronavirus. And I just thought, are you kidding me? I heard that and I looked it up and yeah, churches are not allowed to, you know, congregants aren't allowed to sing. And I thought, what's the point of going then? You know, if you can't worship the Lord with your singing, you know, coronavirus, you know, you <laughs> So, um, uh, question, what was that book in your hand about music? It is called Inside Rock Music. There's the front cover. 
Let me get rid of your comment there. Um, inside rock music, like that. On the back. I think Bible Baptist books bookstore might have it. Um, but I mean the the stuff that's in here is just unreal. Um, and there's a whole section here too, by the way. Um, how rock stars die. And it gets into all these different, you know, all these different guys, and, and they just die all the time. So, um, and I mean, just the horrible deaths that these people have, the horrible lives that they have, and just think, we're going to Christianize this. Huh? What? So, you know, I, I'm not hoping for any kind of a big split or whatever else. Um, for now, the, the guy, you know, Tim and Jake both are, are just, they're out. I don't want anything to do with either one of them. I'm not going to condemn them, condemn them and, you know, just call down the wrath of God upon them and their homes or anything. Whatever. Um, but what they've been standing for, what they've been saying behind my back has just been wrong quite frankly, to do to an older man in the Lord, a man that's in full-time ministry. It's not right. It's not right. I mean, you, you know, you get these guys like Jack Hiles and, and they're, they're actually, you know, messing around extra matter, marital affairs and they're, they're making all kinds of millions of dollars and they're doing all this wicked stuff. And okay. Yeah. The, then it's in rebuke before all, obviously. But if I said something that's just a little bit amiss and a little bit wrong and whatever, have some grace, man. I mean, good night. Uh, where'd that thing go? Okay. Question. I've got a good amount of cash for my job, like 15,000 US dollars. What do I spend it on career wise? I already know of the college scam age 24, no experience in anything. Um, well, you know, I, I remember there was there used to be a documentary on YouTube called The College Conspiracy. And at the end, there was an old farmer and he said, don't look for work, make work. OK, and look for something that you can do. Look for a need that's there in your area and, um, you know, invest in, in something wise. You know, let's just say that uh, you see a lot of, of, you know, I'll tell you one that's really good, depending on where you're at. Um, deconstruction. I've been thinking about doing that in this area here there. I mean, I talking to the town officials here. There was literally a house right over there to be the uh, um, east to the east of this place. There were five of these houses here in Bridgewater originally, and there was a house and it cost the town five thousand dollars to have it taken down by an excavator and hauled off. And I think, man, it's a shame. There was a lot of good, you know, wood in there and windows and whatever else. And I think you could. Almost anybody could start a business. Again, depending. I mean, there's some places that are they are building up right now, but a lot of America is falling apart. Um, you can get out there, start a deconstruction business, deconstruct old houses, be dangerous, hard work, but um, sell the, the building materials, uh, you know, charge a little bit to the town. I mean, there's just so much stuff that you can do. Beating out people's rain gutters, um, you know, learn learn to work like that make things with if you're if you can find some skills with making things out of wood or um you know making clothing or or there's a whole lot of stuff that you can do that you can invest in um question if a saved wicked fornicator repents and forsakes their sin sin i guess you're saying will they still inherit the millennial reign um if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Uh, yeah, I do believe so. I think, you know, there are certain sins that you can do um, that will really mess you up for a while. Uh, um, Romans chapter 8, verse 1. Just say this. Certain sins that you can do that will really mess you up bad, possibly for the rest of your life really ruin your testimony and things but um most sins you can you can say okay lord i'm sorry i shouldn't have done that and you get right and that's that's part of the sanctification process romans chapter 8 verse 1 says there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in christ jesus who walk not after the flesh 
that's the little key to it but after the spirit um if you're walking after the flesh you better repent okay you're supposed to fear god and if you don't that's a problem um the yeah well we're not going to talk about that right now um okay brother uh your question is do you think the cop will not what we found not guilty in order to create an uproar divide and conquer type strategy absolutely yeah i just saw there was another one just like within the last couple of days a black man was shot um he took a police officer's taser and shot it at the police officer and the officer pulled his gun and shot the guy three times killed him another black man got killed so they're they, it's all part of this mind control strategy thing absolutely they're gonna you know divide and conquer um do you have any for excuse me oh do you have any further comment on the back beat and how to avoid it to use right rhythm like snare on one and three one and four and four where's the line that's something i'm not real great at to be very honest um uh dr frank garlock pop goes the music he has a really good thing on that ruckman peter ruckman was a, a dance band um drummer and he has something on the whole backbeat and whatever else um you can study that that's like i said that's i'm not an expert on the music issue but um like waltz beats you'll see waltz beats in a lot of traditional bluegrass old stuff um not the modern stuff not modern modern can uh country music is just rock music that's all it is but you get into some of the really old bluegrass stuff it, it's european um in its lineage it's european string music and you'll hear a lot of the waltz beat the da, 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 you know that's the waltz beat and you'll hear it in the old hymns as well it's not going to create a fleshly thing and you know get you in trouble and whatever else but that's something that you can really study it's a very very interesting thing the thing of backbeat um you know so okay um there's another comment or another question up here see if i can find that i saw a couple of you had questions um can a person forfeit his salvation no um he got saved but later on in his life he walks away from god is he still saved or does he lose it he'll lose his life a lot of times um but you don't lose your salvation if you're truly born again you're sealed until the, the the day of redemption so um but you know i just you know i guess i guess the thing that if you want to tick me off uh, really bad um come out and rend me after um you know claiming to support me come out and attack me um that is something that's very very hurtful and you see it, like I said earlier in the video, you see it all through Pauline, the Pauline epistles, Paul's letters, and he's writing and he's saying, I don't understand. Why are you attacking me? You're casting out my name as evil. You're, is, am I there before I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? And he's rebuking them in a lot of the letters. And, and I understand why. Again, you know, you're going to see that. It's part of being a, a, a Christian. Um, and, you know, and there's a whole lot more stuff I could get into, but, uh, you know, um, I hope that that uh, Tim doesn't go off. I hope that uh, Jake doesn't keep with this. Uh, it's not a problem. You can listen to whatever kind of music you want and whatever. Um, he should take his video down because it's heresy. It is satanic heresy. Um, take it from an older man. You know, I'm an older man. I've been okay. Calm down back here. Um, I'm an older man. I've been in the rock music thing. For years and years, I had long hair. I was hardcore into it. Um, I was into the video game thing. I understand it. It's a, a waste. This little boy right here, um, he's never going to play video games ever for any reason. I'm going to protect my son. I'm not going to say, well, you know, it's up to him. And, you know, you can just kind of, of you know, experience it. I want you to experience it for yourself. No, he's not going to play video games. And, you know, my father initially took stands against rock music and, you know, VCRs even. I remember there was big fights in my family over having a VCR. Boy, how dated now, you know. And then I went to 
uh, the big discs, and then they went to the little DVDs, and then it's, you know, now it's all just, you know, uh, whatever now, there's just online stuff, online videos. But, um, you know, it was just kind of a, well, you can just, you have freedom, you can, you know, look into this stuff. No, no. Um, this, this boy right here is not going to be listening to rock music. It's never coming into my home with him. He's never going to hear or be playing video games ever, ever. Um, and yeah, it's a lot more work. I got to keep him active. As you can see, you know, he's just, you know, um, yeah, <laughs> uh, takes a lot more time. It's easier just to, to buy some video games, plop your child down in front and say, have a ball. You know, I'm going to go off and get on Facebook and talk to people or something. Um, you have to take an active role in your children's lives. And, you know, so I saw a couple other questions over here. Um, uh, is there any books you recommend about church history, Brother Ryan? I'd like to study that more. Um, Fox's Book of Martyrs uh, is a really good one. There's so many editions of it. They, they updated it, modernized it or whatever else. Um, it's a rough one. Okay. Uh, the Catholic church, they try to deny it. Oh, there was no such thing that we didn't burn heretics at the stake and do all these other terrible tortures. Yes, they did. And I actually have a Jesuit Bible from, uh, 1610, the Dewey Reims, uh, written by the Jesuits way back then. It's Catholic edition. They sell to Catholics. And it literally says about in revelation 17, about the shedding of blood of the martyrs. It says, that there's no crime there, essentially. I've shared it in other videos. Can't get into the quote. I don't have it here with me, but I mean, they literally say it's not a, a problem to kill heretics. So uh, Fox's Book of Martyrs, Martyr's Mirror. I know Peter Ruckman has a book or two on church history. Uh, very fascinating study for sure. Uh, there's a Philip Schaff, I think, that wrote a history of the church or whatever, but he's more... You don't really want to trust him. He'll bring out some quotes that are true, but the, can you stop doing the bubble wrap there, please. Um, so you got to be careful of that. But yeah, Fox's Book of Martyrs will really open your eyes to how much Christians have had to suffer. That one, the first time I read it, I just, oh man, the tortures that the Catholic Church has done. Wow. Um, So, uh, so I got to answer Emma here again because um, I saw your comment there. Yes, I did. I did get the book and I'm only very just a little bit of time into it because um, I was trying to get time to read it. And then this whole new office came up for sale in our area. We went we were trying to get time to look at it and everything else. So we're dealing with that. So I'm really kind of getting off you know, um, from where I need to be on it. Uh, but so far what I've read, it's really good. Lost people, but, um, you know, they, they're, they're looking at it more of a, from a humanistic standpoint. Um, but yeah, from what I've read so far, it seems to be pretty good. Uh, uh let's see. So, um, Philip Schaff twists a lot of facts. Yeah, no, don't trust him. Yeah, I agree with that. But I'm just saying that what I was trying to say is um, Ruckman, you know, was talking about, you know, he'll quote certain parts of Philip Schaff and he with the thing there. Don't trust the guy, you know, but um, yeah, I guess as a secular, you know, thing on church history. So, you, you know, um, got to be careful of that stuff. I don't really know many other works on church history that I can even say much about. Um, so, I guess if nobody else has anything to say there. Hold down there. Question, Brian, do you think the Roman Catholic system is a satanic counterfeit of the millennial kingdom? Yes, absolutely. Um, 
you can get into it. They have their own little system of little ways of perverting things, but they're basically a millennial. Um, and they, they uh, teach basically that there is no physical reign of Jesus Christ on the earth, except through his church, you know, the Pope there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. They're a satanic, satanic counterfeit church. Do you have the book, the secret history of the Jesuits, Brian? Um, is that the one I think with the cross on the front and, and like the swastika or something? I'm trying to think of what that one looks like. I might. I'd have to look there. Um, so, okay. Um, so like, you know, let's 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 not destroy one another. You know, let's not be consumed one of another. Let's not make some kind of a thing where we just, you know, uh, may, just be, let's be careful. Okay. I mean, this, this is the only video I'm going to do. Um, what Tim and Jake decide to do after this um, and anybody else that was involved, I, I've heard names and, and people and whatever else. If you're, if you're going to come on here and start making problems, I, if you're saved, I love you in the Lord, but I'm, I'm just going to get ready. Um, you know, uh, you know, the, the Bible talks about in Matthew 18, I think it is, where it talks about, you know, church discipline. And it says about if, you know, if he refuses to hear the church, then, you know, make him to these like a heathen and a public and, you know, and you just treat somebody like they're lost. Um, so, um, you know, we're, we're all going to have areas where we'll beat each other up on and, and things, but let's move forward. Let's not just join the ranks of the anti Brian crowd and, you know, whatever else. I mean, don't, please don't you join that stuff. You know, understand I make mistakes. Understand I'm not always clear in things and have some grace. Um, so question just coming in, but is any, any prayer request, brother? Yes. Um, I said it earlier. You can see, oh, clicked on the wrong thing. You can, you can uh, see it if you watch the whole video, but uh, we did make an offer on a ministry office, a new ministry office in our area. Uh, good price, good place, all kinds of things. Um, but I haven't heard back from the, and, and it was accepted. Our offer is accepted. Haven't heard from back from the realtor. So there, you know, there's stuff that has to be done and the paperwork and everything process, but we will definitely, I'm not sure if it'll be the next video, but it'll be an upcoming video, Lord willing. Um, when we will have an update on the ministry office, the new one. And, um, and so, uh, and I'm, I'm I have, questions I'd like to ask people and things because I know that there's some construction people out there that watch me. Um, so uh, we will be showing uh, the place in great detail and we're going to be very open about what all has been going on. Um, okay, I got to show this one here. I've been brought up as a Roman Catholic and after finding out about the Jesuit or Jesuit oath and history of their crimes, I've lost my faith. Um, well, you know, they're not the society of Jesus. Okay. As you've, if you've seen their Jesuit oath, yeah. Okay. That's not what Jesus <laughs> said to do. Um, the Jesuits and, and it's not just the Jesuits. Again, understand that the Roman Catholic church believes in the temporal and the spiritual, that they have two swords, temporal and spiritual. And the temporal means the physical world. And so they believe that they should take over countries and you know, whatever else. And one of the ways that they do that is through Catholic knighthoods. Okay. Um, Knights of Malta, Knights of Columbus, Knights of the Equestrian Order. Uh, there's Knights Templar. There's a, 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 I don't think I said that one. And the Jesuits are another knighthood. It's a military order. So murdering people, uh, we actually had an attempt made on us and um, not getting into a whole big deal, but they will kill you. And it's all interconnected pol politics and all this other stuff. It is some crazy stuff when you realize how deep this conspiracy goes with Roman Catholicism. And you realize, okay, Jesus was not the one who created this. All the political stuff and everything else. Um, so, um, but, you know, Jesus Christ can, can save you. If you, you know, watch Salvation Message at our channel and things without getting into a whole big uh, deal on that. Um, cause we got to get going here, but, uh, you build a, build that chair, brother. 
do a review on that. Yeah, I did. Um, this is a rustic chair I, I made. I showed it in another video. So I'm not going to probably uh, do much about that. But uh, so. Um, <laughs> hi, Daddy, uh, Dad. Hi, buddy, Dad. Yeah. Well, can you say, here, come here. Yeah, climb up here with me. Mars there says hi to you. So you have to come up here and say hi to everybody. Can you say hi? Hi. Can you wave? Uh huh. So here, here's Oliver for those who don't know. This is our son, um, born actually here in Bridgewater. Um, if you're not aware of the story and everything else, the uh, Lord helped us to, um, my, uh, I, I was actually the one that delivered Oliver. So I, I did have some training on that and studied the issue quite extensively. So we had a home birth, natural uh, home birth. And um, here he is, proof of uh, uh, the beneficial things of uh, having a child at home and no vaccinations or, or whatever else. Um, so five poop poops and one not. Now, yeah, I was supposed to talk about it. <laughs> so anyhow, <laughs> little nutty boy here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, all right, well, that's going to be it. Uh, please do pray for us um, about this new office thing. I'm really excited about this. I mean, it's just going to be oh, so good. To not have to drive an hour and a half, it's going to make it a lot easier for me to, to be around more for people. Um, that's been a great grief to me. Um, uh, you know, so, you know, it's, it's been very difficult. You know, this thing of driving an hour and a half each way. So we'll be a lot closer to home and... So if you if you're aware of the whole thing, if not, just watch the videos. I explain it. But um, so yeah, if people could just pray for us, uh, we did find an office. We did make an offer. The offer has been accepted. But now we just need to do the paperwork. Paperwork's done. We are going to share everything with you, our faithful viewers. Um, so we're really excited and uh, the, about the direction the Lord has us going in the future. Uh, we're going to start meeting with people more face to face. We'll have a good place to be able to do that. And not just you, other people. So, so okay. Well, I think that's it for now. I'm just looking at any more comments here. Yeah. And thank you to everybody out there. I see. Thank you, Brother Brian. I really appreciate the information through the years from Kyle. Um, praise the Lord. We hope to come out with even more in the future. So, that's going to be it uh, for now. Mm -hmm. Can you can you wave one more time and say goodbye? Goodbye. All right. Thank you, everybody that's out there that supports us. And uh, please do keep us in your prayers.